Hey, what's up? It's Frank here from datadriven.tv, the podcast where we focus on the emerging fields of data science, machine learning, and artificial intelligence. I'm here on this lovely day in Potomac, Maryland. Potomac, Maryland is a beautiful place. Uh, so let's just say it's a very high rent district. Here's a couple of homes that are here. And just across the street, there's another home. And in case you're wondering, I'm not doing the whole Ty Lopez thing, you know, hey, what's up, I'm in front of my house. These are not my houses. I certainly do wish that they are, uh, or that they were. But um, in any case, I figured I would film in front of an actual estate uh, to talk about this new term, or it's not new, I've heard it about a year ago, this notion of the data estate. And what exactly does that mean? Well, in historic terms, estate was where the lord of the manor lived, uh, or it wasn't just where the lord of the manor lived, but it was basically back when agriculture or land was the sole source of wealth in a society. And I like the term data estate because it really reframes the notion that data is no longer a byproduct or just an accidental creation of business processes or the storage of information that is required by regulatory authorities. And I think it's really important to think of data as a raw resource. Data is the new oil, if you will. But before oil, there was land. And whoever owned the most land could grow the most food. Whoever grew the most food had control over the food supply. And whoever that was basically called the shots. And I like the term of data estate because it lets you, it really reframes the question, it reframes the narrative, as they say, is that data is a raw resource. And in and of itself, maybe it's not useful. Land in and of itself is not necessarily useful. But you get to grow things in it. And you can harvest it, right? Because it's a process. But the core essence is you had to own and control the land in order to do anything with it. And the way I see enterprises, large and small, everywhere in between, handle their data, they don't treat it with the type of respect that it deserves. I mean, in my consulting time, I've seen, you know, as recently as 2017, uh, databases with improper indexes. Not rocket science. But apparently for some people, I guess it is. But it's not to mock them. It's just that we don't treat data with the kind of reverence and respect that it deserves. And certainly if you're a business, if you're a tactical decision maker, you're probably scratching your chin thinking, well, maybe that's true. And if you're a business decision maker, I don't think they quite get it yet. The leading ones do. They understand that knowledge is just power, but data is the potential for massive profits and massive business transformation. And I think just like it was over, a little over a century ago in terms of oil and, and how that became the new form of wealth and, and industry and manufacturing, we're going to see over the 21st century and a little bit beyond that data is in fact the new land. Or in other words, are you managing your data estate effectively? Are you growing what you need to grow? Are you growing enough? Are you not utilizing it? Are you not treating the land that you own that's part of your um, stewardship, under your stewardship? Are you treating it correctly? And that is today's data point.